Okay, this is W1REX from QRPME, and I'm going to show you how kids get inside tuna fish cans. Um, I've got eight sudden storm packages. I've already parts that I've already uh, packaged up, and I've got eight tuna fish cans and eight tops. If you take a look at a tuna fish can, I don't know if I can spot this easy enough. I'm I'm just guessing where this is, but there's a very um, exaggerated lip that rolls outside the can. I don't know if you can see it on there or not, but that's okay. Anyway, there's a big lip and the top, if you look at the side of the can, it goes way out and what happens is the can, the seaming machine rolls it over twice and, and mashes against the side. So that's what we got to do. All my kits, uh, the boards sit on top and there's a hole through the center of the bottom to hold the two together with a little bolt and I have this little guy here which is an air operated punch press I got from a jewelry it was a gold chain making business in Providence Rhode Island I went all the way down there to pick this up and you put a can in there I made the, the tooling for it and you just womp it in there and do that for the eight I used to all do this with by hand with a uh, Harbor Freight punch, but after thousands of cans, I got really tired of using that hand punch, especially when I had to punch up a hundred cans um, for an order. So now I just have an automatic little machine. So there's eight holes in the bottom of the cans, right perfectly centered. Um, so now that I got the cans all ready. I have two machines. This is a Ross number six, which is a multi. Um, it has uh, all different kinds of chucks for it. Paid a lot of money for this one. There's a drawer down here with chucks for every size can that's, that's uh, under the sun. This is a um, American can, what they call an HO, hand operated. It was made probably in the 20s or early 30s. I got this from a canning museum up in Lubeck, Maine. So anyway, so now that I've got the cans all done, I just put a a uh, roll the can the part up, put a top on it. Now I'm going to do this the way I do it. I do these all at once, and you always try to make the operations that you do. You try to gang them up and take the least amount of time. I'm only doing eight. Normally I would do uh, on a sudden storm. I'd do twenty. 24 or 36 kits, uh, but I got lots of different kits I gotta get done, so this would tide me over until I, um, I've already, I've already shipped the ones that I needed to get out the door, so I did those a little earlier. So there are eight kits ready to what we want. only need that air compressor for the punch press. Um, so I just take these guys, put them in the chuck, there's a pedal here that clamps it, and I pull out the handle, and of course it runs away from me. And you just do that. Now I've modified this. To stop that, normally the way this machine operates, it'd be running all the time. But if you see, there's a little cigar box here, and I got a, a um, um, optically coupled switch relay controlling the power, and I've got a switch mounted over here on the handle. So when I minute I pull the handle, it turns on the motor, and I put the handle back in rest position to stop. So that's a lot easier to get the stuff in and out because to do that while the spindle is spinning at all times, even then it, it has kick out and fly every which way. So when you're doing hundreds of cans, you get it down. I've probably, probably done about 10,000 cans on this machine already.
thing I have to do is I got to make sure, of course, every kit that I put inside a tuna fish can always looks the same on the outside. The first thing I do is make sure I get these in a box and go mark them so I know exactly what kit's on the inside. Because if I don't, I'll have to open these cans up to figure out what's inside. So that's, that's how they get canned. So uh, I'll do another one on kidding next time. Bye.